On this week's episode, we're headed to central Wisconsin to fish with Troy Peterson. This will be a good time. Um, he's known as Mr. Bluegill over there, and he's got a few options that we're going to explore to see what fishing in Wisconsin is all about. Now, I know that we're fishing bluegills and perch day one, and he says he's got something special in store for us for day two. Now, the weather is looking a little, uh, a little iffy. We're going to see how that comes into play with the fish bite, um, as well as to uh, put our gear to the test once again. Now, we told Troy we want the true Wisconsin experience, so we're excited to see what day two is going to bring. Or what kind of cheese he's going to bring us. <laughs> now, just like every other episode of Fish Addictions TV, you're going to notice logos pop up in the bottom portion of your screen. And by clicking on these logos, it will bring you to some awesome companies that have some awesome products. Stick with us for more Fish Addictions TV. <laughs> that was it. That was Addiction, the fact or condition of being addicted to a particular substance, thing, or activity. An addiction is not desirable. It is something that overtakes your life. But what happens when an addiction can't be stopped? An addiction is stronger than any one drug with only one cure. The cure is not rehab, it is not medication, it is not a counselor. The only cure for us is the water beneath our feet, the rod in our hands, the anticipation of that next big bite, and the camaraderie we all share. Fish Addictions TV is brought to you by these fine sponsors. We finally made it to central Wisconsin fishing with Troy Peterson and first thing he puts us on is a, is a small lake that he's telling us monster bluegills are in so we're just excited. Well, we met Troy Peterson um, last year and we signed on with Eskimo. He is one of the five national pro staff and we've been kind of making it a point to get up here and check out the areas that he fishes and kind of see what he's dealing with on a daily basis. You know, how I met Fish Addiction guys um, was through Eskimo. Uh, you know, I'm one of the national pro staff guys for Eskimo and uh, we share actually a lot of different sponsors, the Striker, 13 Fishing, Eskimo. Um, so it, it's a natural fit and you know, they fish a lot like myself. Um, they've got the passion that I do, we share it. When you run into guys that uh, share the same knowledge and uh, passion that you do with the fishing industry, it's, it's like family. Um, you know, it's, we maybe have only met uh, three or four times, but uh, you spend an entire day with them or a week with them, and uh, it's like you knew them your whole life. better there. Ooh, Troy, I think we found what we're looking for here, man. Oh, nice. Oh, that's a nice bluegill in anybody's book. Good central Wisconsin bluegill. Absolutely. We're up here fishing Wisconsin with Troy Peterson, um, and he has put us on some monster-sized bluegills here. Where, uh, what exactly are we doing out here, Troy? You know, we've got uh, some, some good glacier lakes that are really deep, clear, um, that grow giant fish. I mean, obviously Absolutely. you can see it I mean, pushing 10 inches there. Yeah. Um, and uh, we've got a nice little weed area here uh, with a big basin behind us and a shallow bay up in front. And early morning and late evening, these low light conditions will come up and we'll just work these weed areas. 
and then during the middle of the day they'll head out over the base and just kind of school up so awesome. try and catch them before they start heading out to the to the abyss awesome, awesome. beautiful fish absolutely i'm gonna get this guy back oh it's fun well, what we got going on here is we're in central wisconsin we ended up getting here pretty late last night, about midnight rolled in, up at five o'clock, and we're out here with Mr. Bluegill, fishing bluegills right now. And what we got is we're on a big weed peninsula here that ranges from like six to 15 feet. So we're trying to pull these fish out of the weeds. You got about a foot, foot and a half of weeds down there and the fish are kind of sitting tight and we're pull, trying to just pull them straight up out of the weeds uh, to get them active. Uh, it's been kind of a trip left yesterday, talked to Mr. Bluegill probably about a week ago, and he said, guys, get up here and film with me. Uh, love to have you here. So here we are, central Wisconsin, nine hours later, fishing bluegills. A better fish. That's a nice bluegill, man. Wow, I had to Toad. rifle through baits on that guy, um, change up my jigging stroke five, six times. I've probably been marking this fish for four minutes straight, working him up and down, up and down, and finally connected with him on a glow red check eye with uh, just a solid red finesse plastic on there. And it was a blue, beautiful bluegill. I mean, I call those two handers. Definitely having some fun out here with Troy, man. It's been a tough bite, but hell, it's a nice day. You can't ask for anything nicer. Right. You know, we fish uh, a lot of lakes in Washera and Wapaka counties. Um, there's just an abundance of all these small little glacier lakes. And uh, the neat thing about it is, you know, we find one lake that's real good in the morning for bluegills and you, know, you kind of do uh, capitalize on that and you move on and you can fish all these little lakes. You probably fish 10 in a day that are only, you know, just a couple miles apart from each other. So what we're doing here is just fishing these bluegills on, uh, on the lake here for the morning bite and then we'll move on and try for some other species, more likely some perch and crappies uh, for the rest of the day. You know, that's a nice part about central Wisconsin is you've got a very diverse area and a lot of lakes of fish real close to each other. It's not what we're used to up in North Dakota, but still a stellar perch. And we're out here just drilling probably 30, 40 holes on this spot, another 40 holes on the other side of the lake. And we're having to work really hard for these fish. Now with the weather conditions we've had, everything yesterday we had a front move through and we're kind of have a lot of high pressure in the area still. And we've got another one coming through again, probably here in the next couple days. So we got a lot of unstable weather going on and the sun's out today and it's beautiful. As you can see, we're out in our sweatshirts, but you know, makes fishing a little bit tougher, but on these nice days, there's nothing that beats being on the ice. You know, new this year, 13 Fishing came out with their Widow Series makers of rods, and everybody thought, oh, you know, it'd be great, you know, short, you know, good action, high sensitivity, walleye rods, panfish rods. But, uh, you know, what I've got in my hand here is actually the 42L. Uh, it's a Widowmaker with a 6061 Black Betty. And I tell you what, this is a whole hopping machine for a rod. Uh, you've got a great action, really soft tip. But everybody thinks that, you know, you gotta watch the tips with these long rods like this. And I'm telling you right now, from experience and catching hundreds of bluegills with this thing, the sensitivity, I don't even watch the tip. And for the most part, I can feel it come right down through the handle. 
and uh, it's been a, just a heck of a bluegill machine. Ooh. There he is. Ooh, that feels like a better one. Now, when you're fishing a lake that's got kind of a, a diversity of perch sizes, there you go. That's what we're after. Um, switching to a bait that's a little bit larger um, will help you weed through some of those smaller fish um, for the fact that they can't fit it in their mouth. Some will try, but that way you'll select the larger fish like that. Now, what I'm using is the largest size uh, My Moon Jig um, from Custom Jigs and Spins. And I got a nuclear ant legs on here too, just to give it some extra motion, but I'm just packing it full of spikes, um, like six, six to eight spikes on there, just a big gob of meat down there and pound it into the bottom, lift it up and just kind of shake it. And those bigger perch will inhale the whole thing as a little perch will just peck at it and you'll feel the bite. It's more like a, I always call it a machine gun bite. It's just tat, 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 tat. And that's, that's the little perch. Don't set the hook on those guys. Wait for that thunk. So, you know, day one, we, uh, Wanted to get away from fishing the crowd, so we headed to some central Wisconsin lakes in search of some giant bluegills. Um, deep water, uh, clear glacier lakes. Uh, the problem was is we had a very big high pressure sitting or system sitting on top of us. Made the bite a little tough. Uh, it was really a, a light bite, and we just capitalized on uh, the fish that we did catch, but uh, definitely a tough day, and uh, decided to try and do something a little bit different uh, for day two. Look a better one, Mike. Yeah. I think this is going to be the end of day one for us. Tomorrow we're going to go chase whitefish on Green Bay and see what else Wisconsin has in store for us. This should be an experience in its own right, man. I've never <laughs> caught a whitefish. I'm excited just to get on the sleds and get in. Cruise around on Green Bay. <laughs> no, dude. dude. <laughs> should be a good time. Stick with us. More Fish Addictions TV. Hi folks, Kyle here. I want to share with you some of the great features of the Ion Electric Auger. The Ion is lightweight and powerful and has a proven track record going into its fourth year on the market. With just a touch of a button, the Ion's 40 volt lithium ion battery can drill your eight inch auger through a thousand inches of ice on a single charge. Without fumes, without leaks, it makes the Ion very convenient to travel and store. Its quiet operation is perfect for using it inside of your shelter. The latest feature that has been added to the ION is the reverse slush flushing feature, which allows you with a single touch of a button to reverse the rotation of the auger, pushing all remaining slush down and out of the hole. For more information on the ION electric ice augers, go to www.ioniceaugers.com. You know, having these guys come up to Wisconsin, we wanted to give them a true Wisconsin experience and kind of take them out of their realm a little bit. And uh, we came up to the bay in search of these whitefish. Now I've heard uh, some horror stories about Green Bay um, as far as shifting ice. You know, this year is something that we're probably and hopefully never see for a long time. Uh, the ice uh, didn't form out here until right around the first of the year, second week in January. Typically, we're almost driving vehicles out by then. Troy was telling us that they had a lot of wind storms at, as the ice was developing, and it's rough, it's jagged. Uh, quite, quite frankly, it's uh, maybe some of the craziest ice conditions I've ever been on. Uh, you know, using a guide or you know being familiar with the area is extremely important when coming up here. We crossed a couple cracks, but there's there's specific paths to take to get out to the fishing grounds out there. We're out here day two on Green Bay, specifically more in the Sturgeon Bay area. We decided to change it up today. You know, when we make a drive like this out to Wisconsin, 
we want to make sure that we uh, really experience everything Wisconsin's got for us to do. And, and here we are, we find ourselves out here on a monster body of water fishing whitefish. Uh, sounds like yesterday they had a great day, so we're going to try to put on a clinic today and, and uh, get after these whitefish. trying to figure out what these things want to eat. We're marking them on the graphs and they're coming in on the bottom up to about three, four feet off the bottom, two and three at a time. Now we've thrown RPM minnows on them, down at them. We've thrown some heavier slender spoons down there. Um, I just got to roll through the motions to see what these things want to eat today. You know, making a trip like this, you never know what to quite expect. Yesterday, day one, we're in uh, sweatshirts and just our bibs on wake up today hour into the day rain starts the wind starts a little bit we got to throw our coats on it's been raining off and on all day well not too often in the uh, end of january do you see rain in wisconsin especially when you're this far north i uh just switched over to what troy is calling a slider rig i'll show you when i get up here i think i caught the fish on the slider um yeah, I did. Oh, crap. They are hard to they hang on to. They are slippery. You can see I got him, that hook that he's on, slides right on the line. And what I did is I, I'll show you once Mike gets the hook out here. That's something I've never seen guys do before is what's called a slider rig. I've heard of droppers, but this slider rig, what it is is I took a, a shrimpo and I pulled the plastic off of it and actually ran my line through it. Now this just slides on your line up and down. For some reason they're, they're attracted by the pounding motion, but they want to come up to eat. So this slider rig provides them just that, the attraction of bottom commotion, but that target that's up above their body for them to come up and home in on. And that's exactly what this guy did. The one thing I want to touch note on, touch base on, He's soup, man. Oh, yeah, dude, I'm dry. In January, it's pouring rain out here on the ice, and we're still dry. Yep. Never did I think we were going to have to put these suits through this. Right. But testament to striker ice suits for sure. Uh, you know, it started off a little bit uh, slow with that uh, system coming through, and as soon as that rain broke, uh, boy, did the fish ever start. So, you know, we're having some fun. We'll catch a bunch of fish. Got him. Got one over here too, man. Nice. Oh, this is fun. Just take him on. Green Bay These whitefish white actually put on a pretty darn good fight. Yeah, they do. There he is. These are uh, interesting. Hey, nice one, man. Double on whitefish. As soon as the rain died down a little bit, it was game on. Josh and I uh, both caught our first whitefish within five minutes of each other, and pretty darn cool to notch one more thing off the list. <laughs> this is a better one. <laughs> oh, buddy. Come on. Oh, that looks like a better one, man. Yeah, take it on. Maybe it's one of those big green bay wall highs. <laughs> oh, God, that'd be cool. There's a lake trout. Get the lakes out on a wax line. Oh, they've got such soft mouths that we've kind of really toned down our drag. Just, you know, too much drag and we're going to be ripping the hook straight out of their mouth. So we're really playing them out and keeping pressure on, but making sure we don't have enough of that. We're just going to rip that hook out. And we're fishing about 45 feet here. So, man, I mean, when things come together, you're in conditions like we're at. You know, re-energizes you. Yeah, Starting man, we cold. were half hour ago, we were cold. And then all of a sudden we decided to catch some fish. No, we decided to make a crazy change. Yeah. Put, and that crazy change is uh, made all Oh, you different. got them on the bottom hook. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, just got done saying that before you got up here, just with how cold it's been and crazy. It's just been a long morning, and now things are starting to come together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good deal. We'll some more. <laughs> this is fun. It's slippery out here. Yeah. Man, this is turning into a pretty fun day. We're sitting at... Oh, oh got off right at the hole. on the bottom, too. <laughs> Still getting them on the slider? That happens. Getting them on the slider, getting them on the bottom, it's just kind of varying, probably 80% nice. on the slider. Yeah. yeah. That one was on the slider swing itself. Nice. Now, what are we fishing here, Troy? I mean, you, you talked about it being a, okay. kind of a reef out here. So what we've got... Troy Peterson. Uh, Troy is one of those special guys that absolutely has the passion for what it takes to be a guide. He cares about you, he cares about your experience, and he just all around cares about fishing in general. One of the coolest parts of this job is the people that you meet, and uh, every person that's ever fished with me, I, I can remember the stories that they've told of their childhood, um, and it, that's what it always goes back to is you know, why are they fishing? What brought them to fishing? And it always goes back to, you know, the grandmas and grandpas. You know, guiding for me is, uh, it's, it's special. Um, growing up and, you know, having uh, a split family and, you know, a dad that really didn't do a whole lot with you. And, um, he, you know, I kind of learned how to do this fishing stuff on my own. My grandma and grandpa pretty much raised me and uh, there's some funny stories of, you know, grandma showing up to school with, uh, with the boat on the back and, you know, my teacher would come to me and say, hey, Troy, you got a dentist appointment, your grandma's picking you up. If there was no dentist appointment, we were going to catch bluegills. Learning and being able to give back to uh, all these guys that come up and fish with me, um, it, uh, it's a feeling that you know, watching somebody else catch a fish and the, the expressions and you know the enjoyment that that, that they have um, is something that you know I just want to pass on. Um, it's it's a very <laughs> it's a very emotional part of why I do it. For the kids that um, aren't exposed to this kind of stuff, man, they're missing out. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> for you guys out there. Boy, you got kids. Make sure you get them out to the outdoors because you're gonna you're gonna create memories that um, will last a lifetime. Truly. Mm -hmm.